Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to another adventure on the channel. This year, there's gonna be a lot of adventures. I have a very understanding wife. Uh, you find me in my brown Jaguar F-Type R on board the Eurotunnel, heading once again back into mainland Europe. Now, during this trip, this car will take over 10,000 miles on the clock. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to kind of update you on it and actually update you on all the cars in my garage because, as I said, big plans for this year but not all of them involve my cars. And actually, after this trip, you're not gonna see any of my cars on the channel for a little while. So I feel like you might get a bit confused as to why that is, but also what I've got, what I haven't got, what's coming, what's going, etc. But don't worry, all of that will become clear in today's video. So where am I heading in this car? Well, over the next few weeks on this channel, you're gonna see me cover a lot of ground in the F-Type. Like I said, I expect to take over 10,000 miles on the clock of this thing. Currently, it's got just over 8,000 miles. So yes, many miles ahead. Um, in this video, I'm gonna to head to Switzerland. First off, Geneva, then on to St. Moritz. I'm really hoping to find some snow. I had such an epic time exploring a snowy Austria in my GT3 last month. I was like, wow. I want to say the airtight to some snow as well. But the weather forecast is not looking fantastic. Apparently it's going to be raining and like 10 or 12 degrees. So if there was snow, it's going to be a bit slushy by the time I get there. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Switzerland, one of my favorite countries in the world. And I'm very happy to be back out on the road in the airtight. It's, it's been a while since I did a big trip in this car. It was at some point midway through last year and the Jag is, is just made for a for a cross-continental cruise. Now I say the Jag is a great cruiser and I really mean it. So far today, this thing has been averaging 29.3 MPG. Let's not forget, it's got a five liter supercharged V8. I think that's amazing my old gen, my, my first F-Type, I feel like it averaged 19 mpg. And let's not forget my GT3 averaged like 22 mpg on the journey to and from Austria. This thing is a fantastic GT car. why I'm heading to St. Moritz on this trip, or, or San Moritz. Uh, it's for an event called the Ice San Moritz, which essentially looks like the fanciest frozen car event in the world. I've, I've never been before, but it's like a Concorde d'Elegance on a frozen lake. Think Pebble Beach or Hampton Court Concorde d'Elegance. Just, just fancy stuff surrounded by ice and snow. Cars that have taken part previously, a Maserati MC12, Mercedes Gullwing, Ferrari 250, Pagani Zonda, ludicrous stuff, larking around and going sideways on ice. Sounds amazing, right? I'm super excited. Anyway, for now, I'm gonna crack on. I've got five hours to Geneva. I'm gonna have a nice time, sit back, put cruise control on, uh, and yeah, continue to enjoy the start of this particular journey. Now, just quickly, none of these trips would be possible without some amazing sponsors. And this trip has been sponsored by one of my long-term partners, NordVPN. You would have heard me talk about NordVPN before because I've been using it for like five or six years and they've sponsored a number of adventures on this channel before, helping to facilitate some pretty awesome content. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. It ensures your safety and your security when you go online. If you're like me and you move around a lot and you're endlessly jumping onto random Wi-Fi networks in, in cafes or hotels, restaurants, car dealerships, etc., you never know who might be trying to look at or even steal your information when you go online. 
the VPN puts a wall up between you and those trying to look at what you're doing. Over and above that, you can use a VPN to enjoy content that you don't usually get in your country. For me, that's Formula One. With the season about to start once again and me out here on the move, I can set my location to the UK using NordVPN and continue to enjoy Sky Sports F1 wherever I am. Head over to nordvpn.com forward slash STG. You can get an amazing deal when you sign up. I highly recommend you've got a VPN on all of your devices. And as I keep saying, in my mind, NordVPN is the best. Anyway, onwards with the adventure. That was a tight car park exit. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to Geneva. Uh, I gotta be honest, the rest of the drive yesterday was fairly uneventful, except I randomly bumped into my friend, an ex-STG HQ landlord, Merlin from the Duke of London. He is also heading to the Ice St. Moritz in his Ferrari Testarossa, which looked amazing. He's got skis mounted on the back and yeah, it looked super cool. So yeah, we stopped off for a quick coffee uh, at a great coffee spot called Rheim de Café uh, in Rams. Uh, so that was really good to see him and catch up, but he was heading on to Zurich and obviously, yes, I was headed here to Geneva. But whilst I spent the night in Geneva, as you might be able to see, I'm now heading back into France. Uh, that's because, well, I've got a bit of an interesting route today. I am heading to Saint Moritz, but I'm going via Lake Como. And that's because Schmi 150 is there with his Ferrari SF90. And as we're gonna be attending the same event, I thought, heck, let's meet up and convoy to Saint Moritz together. So yes, I've got a four and a half hour drive through the Mont Blanc tunnel into Italy to find Schmi, and then we'll be heading back up into Switzerland. Mont Blanc Tunnel, uh, possibly one of the longest and most expensive tunnels in the world. It's just over seven miles long, takes about 20 minutes to drive through and costs 50 euros one way. Total joke. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes because, well, speed limits are very low, 70 kilometers an hour, and there are speed cameras the whole way through. So you just poodle along, feels like it's gonna go on forever, but eventually you pop out the other side. So whilst I just cruise on through this tunnel, I thought I'd quickly update you on the GT3 because maybe you were hoping or expecting that I'd bring that car on this journey. Obviously last month I took it down to Austria, but that was kind of like the running in period. Maybe you thought, oh, well now he's run it in, I can't wait to see what he does with it next. Well, it's not here because I wanted to bring the F-Type. As I said, I haven't really driven this car properly on a big trip since the middle, middle of last year. And it is such a fantastic Grand Tourer. But over and above that, now that the GT3 is run in, I kind of want to get it back on summer tyres and, and really push on, take it to some dry, sunny roads. And I do have plans for that, but not until like April time. I mentioned at the start of the video that over the next few months, my cars aren't really going to appear on the channel. And that's because I've essentially got a whole load of, well, new car test drives, launch events, and other kind of events going on. That just means I've got really exciting stuff to film, but just not much time to film with my own cars. So, I think, I think the next big proper video with my GT3 will be April time, when I'm going on Podium Tours event to Belgium and Luxembourg. I'm sure I'll use the car in the UK before then, and it may feature in some videos, but it, there won't be dedicated videos with that car, as I say, until that trip. Um, between now and then, the car's also gonna get fully PPF'd. Lots of you, actually pretty much all of you have been asking about this. I think you thought I was some kind of lunatic 
to take delivery of a painter sample Porsche and then just drive down to Austria and get it covered in salt and grime and grit and whatever. The car did have some protection. I think like a front end PPF, like a very basic PPF, which was uh, organized by the awesome team at Porsche Guildford. So there was some protection in place, but in my mind, it's nowhere near as good as the stuff that MVN do, who obviously fully PPF'd my 360. Did a lot of content on that last year. So they're actually gonna fully PPF the GT3. They're gonna get it in in a few weeks and just literally get it fully protected. Anyway, I think I can see light at the end of the tunnel. No joke. So we're shortly going to be arriving into Italy, which means we have a very exciting section of motorway, which must consist of about 30 tunnels. And yes, I'm in an F-type. Here we go. Exiting the Mont Blanc tunnel. Buongiorno, Italy. Ooh, some snow. I've just arrived in Lake Como at Schmee's Hotel. I've parked up, got my laptop out. I'm gonna see if I can convince Tim to have a quick coffee because I need to upload a podcast. Now, Tim doesn't like coffee, nor does he tend to have breakfast, so <laughs> this might be a struggle, but I think he'll understand the fact that I need to upload to YouTube. Anyway, Tim, Schmee. Now, I, I, I don't want to be a snob, but this is potentially one of the worst coffees I've ever had. And we're in Italy. I think it was instant coffee as an espresso. I feel really upset about this, but anyway, I'm going to leave it. I right, grabbed my laptop. I wasn't actually on the, uh, able to upload my video. Now we're going to head downstairs. <gasps> Inspired by Drive the World. Shut up. <laughs> it's got a roof box. Would you know how big the boot is on an SF90? Well, it's not it's big It's about big enough all. for this. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> oh, mate. How's that clamped on? Those sea suckers? Yeah, exactly. Wow. We've done a thousand miles with it, so it's holding up well, which is cool. I actually um, think that's the exact same roof box that I genuinely used on drive. Probably. Box. They, they, it's a Tula roof box, who are like the biggest name in the game for that. But Tula stopped making this one a couple of years ago, probably that, just after drive. That well. is definitely the one I had. And it's still made, sub-branded as a Volvo roof box. So I bought this from a Volvo dealer and they were like, do you need any help with installation? And I, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll work it out. And we actually had it painted. So Godlemans, who do a lot of work for me, actually painted this in Blue Electrico. Bloody hell. Well, yeah, as I, that is literally <laughs> the exact same roof box. What I want to do though, don't go that way. I want to see how your seats are holding up. Because do you remember, first time I saw this car, you still had the seat covers because you were so nervous that people with jeans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Getting, no, no, have you was, relaxed lately? What I was saying about the amount of space in here. That's all you got. Yeah, that's, that's not great, is it? Show me these seats. How have they survived? Oh my god, fairly well. Yeah. yeah well. So this is, what is it now? Um, 6,000 miles? 10,000 kilometers? It's not doing badly. That's, I think that's pretty impressive. How... Can I also just say, an SF90 that's not even a year old yet to have that many miles or kilometers on it. Well, you know, I, I appreciate people who use their cars, and Tim, you're someone who uses your cars. Yeah. Drive. <laughs> no, I love it. For a trip like this, the car is absolutely brilliant. It's so comfortable and cruisy. Do you feel slightly annoyed, as I do, that we have to put winter tyres on our car? <laughs> For this weather? <laughs> yeah. A little bit. It's like summer today. I mean, it's just, okay, it's cloudy, but it's so Do you warm. know when I originally picked this up in Italy, I drove it up to Germany in April, and we actually, because I had the Sport Cup 2 tyres on, on the drive to Germany, on like day two of ownership, I was driving it in snow on Sport Cup 2s. And now this year, I was like, okay, I don't want to do that again. So this year, it's like, yeah, let's get some winter tires, let's track some down, spend a lot of money, because that was like 2,000 something pounds for a full set, because winter tires are in massive demand right now. And then, um, yeah, we get here and we're looking at the forecast and it's like 10 degrees, 12 degrees, yeah. 13 degrees. <laughs> 
Thanks. Uh, I bought the Jag, which is looking lovely over there, to get some awesome photos of it in the snow. And I'm like, yeah. well, I don't, I don't. I mean, I was going for that combo. Yeah. Before we leave this part of the continent, I will find a mountain with some snow to go and park this somewhere to take a photo. Okay, I like that idea. Just like... Well, I mean, hopefully our destination, the Ice Saint Moritz, <laughs> is going to have some ice. Otherwise, that event is going to be a bit of a flop. So I, I, I need to see if I can get this on the ice. Somehow. I, think, I don't I think, think they like that, though. Well, anyway, it's more yeah. about classic cars, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but this is this is a future classic, Tim. It's it a, is future a future classic. classic. <laughs> I like that idea. Anyway, well, let's jump in and see if we can find some find some ice and snow for our winter tyres. Let's do it. Quite narrow those roads, weren't they? Narrow? <laughs> narrow is the biggest understatement I've ever heard. Like picturesque though. They look, I mean, look your car looked good. Yeah, have you seen these door mirrors? How far they stick out? <laughs> oh. Every time I looked in my rearview mirror, you were like hugging our side of the road like well, a grinding hole, and I was like, oh I feel so I was, bad. I was like, how if, how close can I get this? Because if, if if I'm safe on this front, then I'm hopefully gonna be safe on that side. Hey, it's the things you have to do for stylistic content, Tim. You know what? I tell you what. And I hope viewers will remember this. We've driven these roads five, six, seven years ago in so many different cars, and that was such a walk down memory lane driving up past Lago di Como. Like, just, I don't know, it's cool. Good moments, right? Yeah, Look absolutely. how far we've come. You in an <laughs> SF90, me still in a Jag. Don't <laughs> <laughs> <Nothing> change. <laughs> Well, now I've linked up with Tim and his Ferrari. It's the perfect time for me to talk about my Ferrari, my 360, the other sports car in my garage. Now, I left things on a bit of a controversial note at the end of last year with regards to my 360, because I did that kind of honest and open video where I talked about, well, potentially for the first time, considering upgrading my 360 Moderna for a 360 Challenge Stradale. It's because in 2022, I did so much with that car. It was such a monumental year for the 360. It turned 20 years old, which makes it a classic in Ferrari's eyes. I ticked over 50,000 miles, did the Mille Emilia, etc., etc. And well, at the end of the year, I was just like, what do I do with this car now? Maybe this is the end of my journey. But I think it's because, well, it was just a bit of overexposure. And you know what they say, distance makes the heart grow fonder. I've had some distance from the car. It's been a few months since I've got behind the wheel. It was at NVN over the winter, getting the PPF repaired, etc. Uh, it's now back at Windrush, tucked up in the uh, place where I keep it in London. And, well, I kind of miss it. <laughs> I almost can't wait to get it back. And I think, look, I can't promise I'm never gonna have those thoughts again, but it holds such a special place in my heart. It's hard to imagine my automotive life without that thing. And even if, it were, even if I was to upgrade to one of my dream cars, a Challenger Dali, I think I'd still miss my Moderna. So for the time being, it's going nowhere, but I am gonna change how I use it. I think firstly, let's be realistic, I'm gonna use it less than I previously did, just because I'm spoiled to have the GT3 now, and of course this F-Type as well. But also I wanna use it for the, for the really big kind of crazy stuff, to keep it feeling special. Less of these kind of short, quick trips, and more of the big, proper adventures, like the one to Tenerife, or doing events and rallies like the Mille Emilia. So I've got a couple of those things planned for May, which is when you're likely to see the 360 next. And after that, as I say, I'll be keeping my eyes out for the big, mad adventures. And actually, you want, let me know in the comments below, where should I take the 360? Where's, where's kind of nuts? I know my mileage, as long as there's a road to be driven, I'll go there. And knowing that I caught traffic, because this was kind of an epic road, we're now climbing up the mountains. Of course, Sam Moritz, high up in terms of altitude, so we need to leave the base level behind us and climb. And this, this would have been pretty good fun if we hadn't got stuck behind the X1. But oh well, I'm sure it will clear at some point. We can keep enjoying ourselves.
great. I love this car. I love this car. Um, and hey, mission success. We found some snow, like a, like a little tiny bit. Not a lot though. Um, but anyway, I think the best of the roads are behind us. The clouds have come back in. It's a bit busier, some traffic around. So I think call it a day and crack on to the hotel in St. Moritz where I can talk you through my plans for this car moving forward because of course I've been banging on about how much I love it and, and kind of why I'm using it for this trip but, but there's a more specific reason as to why I've used it for this adventure and that will become clear in the weeks ahead but I'll, I'll touch on it at the hotel and I quickly need to talk about the family X3 as well. So yes, onwards to St. Moritz. Well, welcome to Suvretta House in Samaritz. I've made it. I'm super happy that I have because I'm feeling a bit knackered now. It's been a big few days and I'm looking forward to a lie down. But I did say I was going to expand on why I bought the F-Type on this particular trip. Truth be told, all is going to become clear in a few weeks time. I've got a big Jag F-Type update video coming, but I'll touch on it quickly now because I said I would. There's an elephant in the room when it comes to my garage. I've just had a baby and I've got three two-seater sports cars. That's gonna have to change at some point. Not necessarily like now, but towards the end of the year when my baby's a little bit bigger, she can come on trips with us. I need to be able to bring her on trips with us. And right now I couldn't do that. And when I look at the lineup, the F-Type is probably the one that I would consider letting go of first. I've just told you that the 360 is going nowhere anytime soon. And even if it does go somewhere, it's only ever gonna be replaced by a Challenge Radali, and that's another two-seat sports car, so that doesn't help the situation. I've literally only just got the GT3, so that's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. And the F-Type, well, I mean, you know, of course I adore it. I'm five or six years into a love story with that model, but I have let go of it before, and I could let go of it again. But I'm not, I'm not certain, and that's what this trip is. It's kind of figuring it out. I wanted to bring the car on this trip to kind of just start having these thoughts, and as I say, Big update with more of these thoughts coming in a few weeks time, all will become clear. But yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of roughly where I'm at. I gotta tell you about one other car though, which is the Family X3. Uh, that is a four seater, it's the M40D LCI car. It's more my wife Vicky's car than mine. It's, it's really the family wagon and whilst it's brilliant, it's great and we love it and I genuinely don't know how you could ever replace it. I think it just ticks every box. It's not a sports car, it's not something I could bring to the ice San Moritz. It's not something that I would take down to Monaco for a few weeks. It's a bit too everyday for what I want to do on this channel and, and adventures. I need something which is, yeah, inherently more sporty. So, yeah, that's kind of out of the conversation. But anyway, there you go. Have I overcomplicated anything? Is that too much of a bombshell for the end of the video? I'm tired, so maybe I've let too much slip. I don't know, but I'm gonna wrap up this video now. Hopefully you understand what's in the garage. And oh, I'm just gonna stop talking. Give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Stay subscribed, because yes, big, big videos still to come.